Welcome to the afterlife. You're being reincarnated as an Argentinosaurus. You enter the world by passing through your mom's ovipositor. It's kind of like a water slide, but it's actually just a part of her reproductive system. Oh yeah, and there's no splash at the end. Right now, your mom is one of the largest animals to ever walk the earth. You, you're about the size of a melon, and frankly, just as defenseless. So what do your parents do to protect you? Let's go see. That's right. They cover you in a few inches of dirt, and then kind of forget you exist. You'd think they'd just use their size to keep you safe, but babysitting while being 70 tons isn't the best idea. So think of them abandoning you as a favor. But now we've got a bit of a problem. You're in an egg, and nothing's stopping predators from eating you. But that's all part of the plan. Every year, the adult Argentinosaurs group together and lay their eggs in one big batch. So instead of you being the only sitting duck, you've got about a thousand more. It's really just a numbers game. By flooding the area with so many eggs, the Argentinosaur ensures that even if most of you get eaten, get sick, or stumble off a cliff, a few are probably going to survive. Look, I'll be honest. Your life is basically Squid Game, except you don't win anything. You just get to not be eaten. Anyway, you'll spend the next few months in your egg growing, until you're around the size of a goose. Leaving your egg, things get intense fast. You know how you play a video game and then the objective just says, survive? Well, you climb out of your hole, but before you can even react, you get eaten. Okay, that one was just unlucky. Let's try that again. This time you see the ferns on the edge of the nesting site. You make a run for it, but your stubby legs are too slow. You try crawling, tiptoeing, even playing dead, but they all end the same way. So, how do you survive? Sea turtles. <clears throat> yes, sea turtles. So, they pretty much got the same strategy as you. Lay a bunch of eggs and hope a few will make it. But the ones that do, they'll unintentionally use their siblings as bait. Something like this. So, you need to find a group of your hatchmates trying to escape together. Doing this, you all dash into no man's land at the same time. Left and right, hatchlings are going down. But you, along with a couple others, are able to make it to the ferns. And though you already have a slight case of PTSD, you'll probably forget pretty fast. Your brain is tiny. Its functions are no more than don't get eaten and eat. And that don't get eaten part is starting to light up. These forests are teeming with predators. You've got Moposaurus, Meraxes, Scorpiovenator. And those are just the ones that can swallow you in one bite. It's time to deploy, really, your only survival adaptation. Go, go, gadget, cryptic coloration. Okay, this might not look like much, but it's kind of like how a baby deer is born with all those white spots, as it mimics sunlight filtering through the forest, and your coloration helps you blend in with the ferns and cycads. Alright, not the most OP trait, but I told you, it sucks to be born as an Argentinosaurus. But besides, if you get spotted, as long as you keep sticking by your newly formed herd, the odds of you being singled out decrease significantly. But these are all band-aid fixes to the bigger problem. You're small, and as a sauropod, that's a one-way ticket to death. So you need to start your bulk ASAP, and the easiest way to do that is by eating from the tops of trees. But maybe you'll just stick with what you can find on the forest floor. You're like the Cretaceous version of a lawnmower, except you don't really turn off. Thanks to that small brain, you really only need a few hours of sleep at night. But even with that almost around the clock eating, you can't waste any time. That means no TikTok, no doom scrolling, and certainly no chewing. In fact, you couldn't chew even if you tried. Your jaw muscles are non-existent, so no chad face for you. However, without the need to chew, each bite saves precious time. But even this strategy has its drawbacks. Without teeth to break down the plant matter, you'll need to find an alternative method to do so. Step one, acquire a rock. Now swallow it. Once these are in your stomach, they'll turn into these things called gastroliths, which are just rocks in your stomach. But they'll help break apart your food like the teeth you never chewed with. One other thing you'll need to do is acquire a strong gut microbiome. This will help you extract as much nutrition as possible but there's only one way to get that. This is dung left by one of the adults, and it's full of those gut germs you need. So, you're gonna have to eat it. Once that's all complete though, it's pretty straightforward. With enough food, your growth accelerates rapidly. 
By year one, you're already the size of an adult cow. By two, you're double that and only growing faster by the day. Your tail is morphing into a formidable weapon, your legs are less stubby, and your neck is stretching closer to the leaves. Now you'd think bigger always means better, but for you, not so much. One day you and your herd are play fighting, and out of nowhere, a Moposaurus appears. They're the largest predator in your environment, weighing in at 5 tons and about 35 feet long, and their specialty, eating juvenile sauropods. At your size, there's not many options. You're too big to run. Well, you can try, but your top speed is only like 5 miles an hour. You're too big to hide, with your cryptic coloration kind of disappearing at this point. Yet, you're still too small to fight back. So as always, you're a sitting duck. But now you're a bigger one? Your only hope is a dance-off. Okay, one of you's about to get eaten. Like a sick game of Russian roulette, you manage to make it out alive. But you're not going to be able to survive like this for much longer. Your herd's numbers are thinning. It's time for you to seek protection elsewhere. Now that you're grown, you're finally big enough to join an adult herd. One might assume finding a group of giants isn't that hard, but it's kind of like spotting a whale in the ocean. There's a lot of ocean and not a lot of whale. The key is the pattern to their movements. Their paths often follow the same routes year after year. Now, remember that dung you'd rather forget about? It actually holds even more secrets. As they ate, they unwittingly planted seeds, leaving behind a trail of future trees. And to help you zero in even further, you can always follow the scent pheromones. By doing this, you should be able to find the herd. Sooner or later. For the next few months, you do a lot of walking, but at least you get to eat along the way. And though you haven't had any luck yet, one night when you try to go to sleep, you realize how much progress you've made. You're so big now that it's actually uncomfortable to lay down. From this point on, you'll be sleeping standing up. However, this night, rather than being awoken by the sun, a gush of water wakes you up. A waterfall? That wasn't here when you went to bed. And why is it yell, oh? Adult Argentinosaurs pee a lot, maybe even upwards of 100 gallons a day. They actually drink so much water that during some droughts, a herd of them can easily turn an entire pond into a puddle. Well, at least the herd found you. And besides, it tastes kind of good anyways. <laughs> Yet even with this new group, life still isn't sunshine and rainbows. You're an outsider to them, so for now, you'll just have to follow along until you're accepted. Over the next few months and years, you build trust, getting closer and closer until you fully integrate into the herd. And while now you've got some extra protection, life has brought on a whole new dynamic. You don't really get how the hierarchy works yet. You just know you're on the bottom, and every once in a while, someone comes to remind you of it. Nevertheless, there is a clear leader. She's the oldest member of your group at around 50 years old, and has probably given birth to everyone here. Her lifetime of experience guides the group. When a predator comes, she organizes a defense. When someone wanders off too far, she lets them know. You're learning a lot, growing fast, and by about 20, you're too big for predators to really mess with you anymore. Usually, you're spending your time eating, of course. But now, you can do it even more efficiently. Now that you're larger, your neck offers even more benefits. Sure, you can reach up to the tops of trees now, but the best part, you can do this big circular rotation. So rather than moving your entire body for your next bite, you can just move your neck. But that's not the only thing that's changed. Since losing your cryptic coloration, it's been replaced with these very vibrant colors. What's the point of camo when you're the size of a building anyways? These vibrant colors now serve the purpose of attracting mates. But you haven't attracted any yet. Me too, man. Me too. Your reason being the grown adults. You have to compete with them to reproduce. And because they're older and bigger, when you sword fight with your necks, kind of like a giraffe, they always win. Until you get bigger, no love for you. And it's very traumatizing. By about 30, you're big enough to finally win these fights. You get your mate and your babies. They're born in the same nesting site as you. And following your family tradition, you abandon them. Of the 1,000 eggs that you were born with, approximately 50 have made it to adulthood. That's about a 95% mortality rate. You're one of the lucky ones, but at least you've made it. By 40, you're pretty much fully grown. Some think you'll continue to grow slowly forever, but at this point, you're around 80 tons, about the size of 13 African elephants, and around 110 feet long, which is longer than some blue whales. You've grown about a hundredfold increase since you were a hatchling, that's like a 20-inch human baby growing to be 160 feet long. 
but you are cheating a little bit. You have these air sacs all throughout your body, which cut down on weight while also giving you your huge build, making you 10 times larger than any predator in your environment. If a Maposaurus gets close, you have no problem pulling out the hydraulic press. Still, your life ahead is long. Some Argentinosaurs live to 100 years old. As you age, you'll gain new responsibilities, help lead the herd, pass down everything you've learned, and continue to grow the generations that will follow you. Nothing can stop you. Well, almost nothing. On your 51st birthday, there is a thunderstorm. And because you're so tall, the trees can only provide so much cover. And then... Thank you for watching. YouTube thinks you'll like this video. And Jehona out.